This is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of September 19th, 2022. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we explain why, in the West Anchorage Senate race, we have problems with the fiscal approach of both the Democrat and Republican candidates. Second, we discuss what causes Alaska's outmigration and why it isn't any governor's fault. And third, we explain why the appointment of Devin Mitchell as the interim commissioner of revenue is, at best, an uninspired decision. And now, let's join Michael. I say we just kick things off with number one and start looking at, uh, you know, start looking at what's going on. The differences between the D's and the R's, are there differences? Really? Sometimes, sometimes there are, sometimes they're not, but uh, give me, give me your, give me what you're thinking here. Well, there's an article in the Anchorage Daily News about the uh, Senate race in West Anchorage um, between Matt Clayman, uh, Democrat representative and current incumbent uh, Mia Costello. And it talks about the, uh, the differences between the two and, and talks about how that race, because of the closely divided nature of the Senate, how that race could decide whether or not the Senate becomes a coalition uh, governed uh, body or a, or a Republican governed body. To me, as I read through that article, to me that uh, the article sort of encapsulates the worst of uh, Alaska fiscal policy on both sides. Uh, Clayman talks about the need for additional spending, the need to support K through 12, additional support for K through 12, the need for additional support for the university, additional construction budget, uh, additional uh, uh, spending to support uh, teachers in the form of defined benefit programs, just, you know, the full range of, of what the progressives slash liberals are, are talking about in this campaign. Um, and, but then it comes to the point of, well, how are you going to pay for it? And uh, and Clayman says, well, we can't, you know, we can't afford the PFD, so we need to cut the PFD uh, in order to pay for uh, in order to pay for all these programs. In other words, without him saying it, take it out of the pockets of middle and lower income Alaska families, top twenty percenters like him, limousine liberals like him, uh, don't have to pay for all these programs they want to push. They get to, you know, they're they're, they're telling middle and lower income Alaska families how they're going to spend their money uh, without uh, without standing in and contributing contributing to it themselves. Mia, on the other hand, I've been a fan of Mia and I've been off Mia and I just, I sort of go back and forth. Mia, on the other hand, talks about the need for the PFD. And I think that's, I think that's great. Um, but then you, and, and sort of off this column, off, off this story, but you flip over to another page, you flip over to the opinion page of the ADN and Bethany Markham has a, has a, an opinion piece entitled what pet projects is Alaska paying for? And she goes through all of the pet spending, all of the pet uh, budget projects uh, that got passed in the last budget cycle. And in one of the paragraphs, she says this and $588,775 to the private diamond alumni foundation to replace diving boards. <laughs> Who sponsored? Who proposed that uh, that pr uh, private payment? That payment to a private private group to uh, to, to to pay for uh, diving boards? Mia, right? So you've got Mia who talks a, who talks a great game about controlling spending. Who talks a great game about 
you know, about making sure that the, that the PFD is prioritized, making sure that, that, uh, that we don't have to invade the PFD. She's against taxes, uh, of, of course, um, uh, as an alternate means of uh, paying for government, just against all that, preserve the PFD. But then you just flip over to another column uh, and you find you find what what goes on with Republicans, what goes on with top 20 percent Republicans. They're, they're out there giving away state funds, as right. Bethany, as Bethany rightfully points out, giving away state state funds to uh, to private organizations to do to do private things. Yes, uh, it, it's great that uh, that Diamond High School have diving boards. I, I, I can't argue against that at all. But that's what the Diamond Alumni Foundation is set up to raise funds for. And here now they've got uh, by by going to Mia to get to sponsor this on uh, on the Senate floor. Um, uh, it was a Senate floor amendment. It wasn't it wasn't in the governor's budget. It wasn't in the it wasn't in the uh, Senate uh, Finance Committee budget. It was a floor amendment. Here you've got Mia sponsoring you know roughly six hundred thousand dollars to go to a to go to a private foundation. So. You know, I, I look at the West Anchorage Senate Senate race. Oh, and, and by the way, that amendment couldn't have been adopted without the support of the Senate Republicans, the other right. Senate Republicans. Right. So you 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 look at the West Anchorage race and you go, yeah, yeah, you know, it's limousine liberal against conservative R. Well, she's not a conservative R. She is she's she's this this abomination that we've got in Alaska of R's who talk a good game. But then doesn't follow through. They, they they talk about being you know fiscally conservative. They talk about pr prioritizing the PFD. They talk about uh, uh, no tax. We don't need taxes to fund government. We, government has enough revenues on its own. And then they go and do something like this. And guess where that six hundred thousand dollars came out of? It came out of the PFD, right? Because the PFD was the marginal PFD cuts were the marginal source of revenue uh, for this last budget. So. Mia, Mia Costello, I mean, I, it, it's, it's only, you know, what, it's a dollar of uh, an Alaskan, a dollar of PFD. But Mia Costello took PFD money that otherwise would have gone to Alaska families, took PFD money and converted it over and gave it to, you know, sponsored an amendment that directed it to a private uh, Diamond High School Alumni Foundation. So what do you what do you do in West Anchorage? I mean, right. you got... You got a limousine liberal on the one on the one hand who wants to have all these government programs but doesn't want to pay for it himself. He wants to shove it down to to middle and lower income Alaska families through PFD cuts, and then you've got a top twenty percent Republican who, you know, talks a good game about about spending cuts and talks a good game about fiscal restraint and talks a good game about fiscal responsibility, but when push comes to shove, takes money out of the PFD to give it to a private foundation. You're saying this is like a not in my backyard situation, right? I'm all for the development, but not in my backyard. I'm all for the budget cuts, but not for my pet project. I mean, that's kind of it's kind of the direction you're going, right? It's it's Alaska hypocrisy. I mean, and and it's and and the Republicans want to say it's the Democrats who are the hypocrites. The Democrats want to say it's the Republican who the Republicans who are hypocrites. They're all hypocrites, right? Um, I mean, I, and and the West Alaska and the and the West Anchorage race just just you know brings that home when you look at the when you look at the two candidates. Um, I got to because we talked about this when it went down. When it came down, it, it, we talked about it, and I had a conversation with Mia Costello about this uh, via text. And um, her comment was, and I'll let you dissect this, but every Anchorage high school gets this money. Service East, West, Diamond, Chugiak, Bartlett. These are thirty year old buildings, and the municipality manages them, not the school district. It will be administered by the Diamond Alumni Association because Don Winchester takes no administrative money and comes in under budget. This was the only capital request that I got for, for Anchorage that I got. But my question was, is this the state's responsibility? I mean, that's really what it comes down. It's great that you were trying to be fiscally responsible and have no fees and everything else. But is this the state's responsibility? And her answer was, I'll check with schools that were built with state funds. But the, she said in the past, when constituents were asked for life safety projects, I was able to get the funding for the various government entities were hesitant because it assumes liability, yada, yada. I mean, again, it's more of a kind of a tap dancing thing than anything else. I mean, sure, it's nice to have, but is it a must have? Is it the state's responsibility to dive into those things? What do you mean? The, the, the school district's going to assume liability with respect to the to these diving boards, diving 
Alumni Foundation is going to pay for them, evidently, but the school is going to operate them and is going to administer them. So, I, yeah, that, that's a, that's a non-answer. That's a that's a let's see. I'm caught in a trap here. How do I get out of it? What what words can I string together that look like a long sentence and and, right. and get and get me off the hook? I mean, it's it, let's be let's be clear. Don Winchester. I mean, I could I could go on days about Don Winchester. Don Winchester is is almost solely responsible, along with Bill Stoltz. For the for the UAA uh, 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 arena, uh, the Seawolf Arena that, right, that right. got built back uh, out of out of state money, no private money given to it, just all all state money. I mean, it's it's it, it is it, Alaska has this 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 concept that the state has to the state has to pay for everything. We've gotten away from it some over the last few years. I mean, we're nowhere near the level we were when Stoltz was in charge of the. Of, of the finance committees on the House side and, and, and still having influence on the Senate side. We're nowhere near that level, but we've still got this influence. And if we're truly going to be fiscal conservatives, I mean, how is Mia going to say, you know, next time, you know, somebody else wants a, wants a project in their district, how is she going to say no after they, you know, voted to, to give her the project in her district, the project that was important to her, um, six hundred thousand dollars. This, this, I'll scratch my back, you scratch, uh, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine, or whatever the the phrase is. It just goes on and on and on and on. And how do you trust somebody to be fiscally conservative when they, even now, when we, when, when we've seen the consequence of it over the past decade, when they still engage in it? So I just, I, I, I don't know what to do. I mean, you've got. Clayman, who's clearly a limousine liberal, clearly says we want a lot of government programs that, by the way, employ my friends and 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 keep uh, uh, my donors happy. Uh, right. We want we we want we want these government programs. I don't want to pay for them, so let's take them out of the pockets of middle and like a good limousine liberal. Let's take them out of the pockets of middle and lower income Alaska families. Okay, that's bad. But then you got you got you got Mia who says I'm a conservative. I'm fiscal conservative. But oh, by the way, that six hundred thousand dollars. Don't don't worry about that. That was you know that was something. That was just for my friends. Don't worry. It's not much. Just for my friends. I we we can't we can't keep going on like this. And to have a race where that's your choice: limousine liberal or crony capitalist uh, on, on the other side is just just very frustrating in sure. terms of. In, in terms of Alaska fiscal policy. So what you're saying is we're faced with the choice of the lesser of two evils, right, Brad? I mean, is that, I mean, that this is, this is the conundrum that we've faced for the last 45, 50, 60, 80 years in this country. Here's the lesser of two evils. Which brand of poison would you prefer to take? I mean, that's part of the problem. And I think, again, with the best of intentions, I think Mia has the best of intentions, but that's what happens. People go down to Juno, they're going to, crusade they're going to fix everything they're going to do everything and then they get down there and they get subsumed by the machine and then they're like well but i've got to fix this i've got to I've, i'm going to cut but not this one thing because my constituents need me yeah it's it's it ends up in the same place michael i mean the lesser of two evils maybe it's lesser maybe you look at the ultimate dollar amount and and think that that's said how you how you figure out lesser. But look, they're both cutting the PFD. Clayman says we need to cut the PFD to do a bunch of programs for my friends and, and government employees and and uh, but I don't want to pay for it. Mia says, oh, you know, I'm against I'm against spending, except for this case, when it comes out of the PFD. So it's I, they're ending up in the same place. They are two yeah. paths, two different paths to the same endpoint, which is the PFD gets cut. Well, I mean, but there are shades of differences, right? I mean, I agree with you, but at the same time, there are shades of differences, right? I mean, $600,000 versus how many millions and billions of dollars for defined benefits and all these other kind of things. Granted, it's all cuts, it's all cuts to the PFD, but there are shades of differences. So if I had to choose, you know, what are, you know, there's still, I think, a clear choice in that race. Well, it, it's it's based on dollar amount, and you go back to the. I mean, if we get back into this 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 crony capitalism, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours uh, uh, approach. I mean, we saw that's what happened to us in the early twenty teens. I mean, Bill Stoltz led led the charge. We've got we've got you know Matsu College or whatever the heck we call it out there. 
AstroTurf uh, fields and Uktavik and every place else in the world, right? I mean, you know. It's exactly right, Michael. I mean, we've, we've, we've seen the consequences of, of this just a little bit more, just a little bit more. I mean, Bethany's, Bethany's article goes through, goes through uh, uh, 2.5 million for facilities, the private Alaska Sea Life Center, 7.3 million to the private Aludic Museum and Archaeological Repository, 6.3 million for creation of a new private Chugach Regional Archaeological Museum, 87,000 to replace a scorebo scoreboard for the private Seawolf Hockey Alliance, and 588,000 to the private Diamond Alumni Foundation to replace. It goes on and on and on. Yeah. And, right. And, and it's not just, I mean, so Mia gets her $600,000, but to get her $600,000, she voted for the 2.5 for the Alaska Sea Life Center, the 7.3 to the Aludic Museum. It just goes on and on and on. And yes, maybe as a matter of degree, maybe at the end of the day, her votes total up to less take from the PFD than Matt's votes. But it's it's the same concept. And, and in the early 20 teens, those votes for those little projects, those little projects, totaled a lot more than what we were than what we were taking away for government programs. Oh, Brad, um, picking on Mia is not entirely fair. The <laughs> state kept the PFD money. Could you not argue she is trying to get her district's share? Says Chris from Twitch this morning. Brad, she, she's she's trying to get her district's share. Of yeah. the PFD, PFD money. Well, to yes. get that, she's taking money out of the middle and lower income Alaska families in the Matsu, in Fairbanks, in Uktavik, in Western Alaska, on the Kenai Peninsula, in Southeast Alaska. She's taking she's taking money from uh, when you take PFD cuts, you're taking money from everybody else. So I, I don't know. So so we got a little greed and corruption going on. So it's OK because it, because we got a lot. We, there's a lot of other greed and corruption going on. I don't. I don't get it, Michael. I mean, I don't, I, we, having lived through the early 20 teens, having lived through Bill Stoltz, having lived through all those damn projects, particularly including the UA, the University of Alaska Anchorage. at and Center, the at and Center or the Alaska the, Airlines Center or whatever it's called. Yeah. Alaska Airlines Center. We paid a piddling amount for operational. It, they paid it. They, they, to get those naming rights, what they did was give away a bunch of free seats. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Of, a bunch of discounted seats. They didn't give any money. I mean, God, people in this state don't give money. Right. You just go ask the government for money. Right. Uh, but I, you know, I, I'm not, what I'm really picking on, I'm not, you're right. I'm not just picking on me. <laughs> I'm picking on the Republicans who voted in the Senate to support that amendment so that she would support their amendments. It's just, it, it is, it is, it's the type of thing that gets out of control. It's the type of thing that that blurs the lines and says, okay, you can't you can't just blame the Democrats without also blaming the Republicans because they're both taking money out of the state. They're both taking money out of the PFD for their for their own their own you know personal uh, objectives. They're both telling mom and pop out in the Matsu Valley or down on the Kenai Peninsula or down in the southeast. They're both saying, you know that 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 PFD money. Well. We know better how to spend it than you do. We're not going to give it to you. We're going to we're going to spend it in a way that's really important. Right. That'll uh, benefit the community. Uh, right. I mean, that's the thing. We're going to benefit. We're going to take your money. And we're going to spend it so that the community benefits. You'll and feel that claim. And that claim and spends it on things that we that that you know people on the program don't like. Well, Mia Costello spends them on things. That, that people on this program shouldn't like. It's, this is a repeat of the 2018 when a lot of the cuts were there and everything else and, and people were saying, and, and except it was, oh, well, don't don't cut the division of ag. Don't don't cut this department. Don't cut that program. Those are, that's my special program. I'm all for you except for this special program. And, and I think that's part of the problem. I mean, again. Exactly, exactly right, Michael. And that's what gets me back to, I know people on this program hate me to talk, hate me talking about, but that's what gets me back to taxes. We're not going to cut our way out of this. Let, let's let's face up to reality. We're not going to cut our way out of this. So what we ought to be looking at is the fairest way of how to pay for uh, uh, the reality that we're in. If Mia wants if Mia wants Diamond High School diving boards, then let's make sure that all Alaska families contribute equi equitably to them instead of taking it out of middle and lower income Alaska families. If Matt Clayman wants defined benefits for 
for you know teachers or he wants you know more spending for this or that let's make sure that all alaska families pay equitably for it as opposed to taking it out of pfds yeah uh i think chris then uh, sums his, his argument up perfectly when he said democrats are just being democrats republicans should know better I mean, and, and that's right. I mean, it's it's the truth, right? I mean, this is the party supposedly of smaller government, of less spending, of all these other things. And yet, as we talked with Rob uh, Myers about last week or whatever it was, 10 days ago, that's the problem in this state is that we are a state that was essentially a blue state that slowly bled to red, but not all the way. Right. We were red in many ways, but in other ways, we're like, oh, the government teeth, that looks that looks tasty. We should get on that right now. I mean, that's what it's all about. It is. And, and, and for, and, and it is, it is, it's just frustratingly hypocritical for Republicans to say PFDs, no taxes, but spend on my, on my high school's diving boards uh, or no, no taxes, PFDs, no taxes, but spend on the Aludic Museum, which I think is down in uh, down in uh, Kodiak. I mean, it's it's just frustratingly, frustratingly uh, hypocritical to, well, for, the, for, for the Republicans to continue to go down that road and then turn around um, and say, oh, but but not not for this program, not right. for this, not for this. Well, expense. Millions of dollars. You just listed off millions of dollars that are going down there. And you're just like, oh, wait a second. Uh, now, the Republican women of Fairbanks say, dude. Mia is nice, claiming not so much. Okay, look, if I was in that race right now and I was a voter, I would vote for Mia. Okay, that's because that's my choice of the two. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't call her out on actions that are obviously not in the spirit of the party platform, right? I mean, we, oh, dang. We, 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 <sighs> Hey, Brad, number two's coming up. Let's uh, get to that. Uh, Michael Duke Show. Common Sense, Liberty-based, free-thinking radio. I don't even know if I want to go back to the Mia Costello thing. Brad is, is so ramped up about this. Um, you know, look, uh, again, I, I don't think, are you, let, let me get, let me be, let me get clarification here. You're not saying don't vote for Mia versus Clayman. You're saying let's call a spade a spade. Let's call out the bad behavior. Am I, am I wrong? Or is there another choice in that race that you would rather endorse rather than Mia uh, at this point? Or are you just basically saying we have to call out the bad behavior? I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I, I'm honestly saying, I'm honestly saying, I don't know who I would vote for in that race right now. I mean, I, I've supported Mia in the past. I would like to support Mia in the future, but it's this sort of stuff. And it's not me, it's Bethany Markham who's, who's pointing out the, uh, I mean, don't look at me, Republican women of Fairbanks. It's Bethany Markham who's pointing out uh, the, the problems that that is are being created by uh, these sorts of, of private grants uh, uh, and and the and the adverse impact that has on Alaska's economy. All I'm adding to it is saying, and they're coming out of PFDs. Don't think for Republicans to say, I'm I support a full PFD. I'm in I'm in favor of PFD. No taxes. We don't need taxes. I'm in favor of a full, full PFD. But just spend this six hundred thousand dollars on my, on on my constituents, you know. You multiply that. You multiply that by the sixty legislators, that 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 want their you know six hundred thousand yeah. dollars or a million dollars, and it just gets out of hand. And so I'm saying I'm saying it's hypocrisy on both sides. I I don't. Yeah, maybe maybe there's a relative level of hypocrisy. Maybe Matt Clayman is at a higher level of hypocrisy than than Mia. But there's hypocrisy on both sides. And and if we are going to get Alaska's fiscal situation under control, that hypocrisy has to end on both sides. It can't it can't just keep we can't just keep saying oh it's Democrats' fault because the Republicans are doing it too. It needs to end on both sides. If there I mean that we we had this discussion sort of in connection with what does it mean if the Republicans take back the House? Well, it doesn't mean anything if we get this sort of behavior again. If we get the sort of behavior that you have to protect this in my district and that in that district and oh we can't have taxes. Um, and so there's no place else to go but the PFD. I mean that's right. that's that's what we're left with.
Well, so, and, I, and I get tired of this argument of uh, because I've faced this at every level with every politician, whether it was I remember getting criticized for complaining about the actions of George W. Bush back in the day. Uh, I remember getting criticized about uh, my comments on Trump back in the day. How You know, he's the best choice or he or she is the best choice. Again, if you don't call out the bad behavior, how hypocritical is it of you? the average voter or the super voter, how hypocritical is it of us to say we need to have cuts? Well, except for this person, they've, they've got a pretty good head on their shoulders. So they, if we don't call out the bad behavior, they will continue to do it. That's the problem. And 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 Brian here says it best. He says, Mankin, H.L. Mankin, by the way, for those of you who don't know that is, is a libertarian writer, said something like, an election is an advanced auction of stolen goods. And that's, it's a hundred percent true. I mean, it's a hundred percent true. Well, you know, it'd be great except for when I do it and then it's okay, Brad. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Michael. I mean, I'd love to, I'd love to support Mia. I would love to say, by gosh, she's walked the talk. She's been there. She's been a fiscal conservative. She's stopped the, stopped the excess spending. She's protected the PFD to the maximum extent she possibly can. She hasn't. I mean, and this proves it. This, this, right. this, I mean, and again, well, it's not me, it's Bethany I, that's pointing it out uh, in her op ed piece. I, 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 I like Mia, but I'm also reminded that she was part of the cabal that put together SB 26 and uh, was kind of part of that crew as well. And, and so I, you know, she's got to be reminded of which side of the bread is buttered, so to speak. And I think this is just another way of pointing it out and saying that was probably not a good idea. I mean, it may have made your constituents feel good and you may have gotten some kudos at some meeting, but the problem is it's 600,000 here, 600,000 there. Pretty soon you're talking about real money and $6 million for a, a museum and some of these other things. Great. Nice to have go out and collect the money privately. That's what you should do. Not take it from the people and spread the wealth and redistribute the wealth for the good of the people. That's socialism. That's what that is. That's right. I mean, it's it. Let's not take it from the Duke's family in in Wasilla. Let's not take it from the from the Macheki family in in the Kenai. Let's not take it from you know. We can go around the state and have various families. If Diamond wants diving boards, let's let the people that support the Diamond Alumni Association. Let's let them raise the money to, sure. uh, uh, to, to build it. If Don well, Winchester wanted the, the University of Alaska Anchorage Arena, let's let him go out like every other university at the time right. that was building those structures. Let's let, let him go out and, and, and build 50 per, or uh, raise 50 percent of the cost from private <laughs> from private donors. Well, let's, let's raise 100 percent of the cost. You go out, sell candy bars, do whatever you need to do find donations, find endowments, go, you know, make it happen. Why does it have to be government that we go to back at every opportunity? Because the money's free? Because it's easier to strong arm and manipulate politicians than it is to go to the private sector and sell your product, whatever your product is, whatever your cause is? All of those things should be funded by private money, not by the government. That's insane. And the fact, Michael, we're talking about this, still talking about this in the 2020s, when we saw what this did to us in the 20 teens, the fact that we still have legislators who are doing this sort of thing in the 2020s is just infuriating. I mean, did we yeah. not learn the lessons? Yeah, no, we, we apparently didn't learn the lessons. And I guess that's why you got to keep bringing it up and take the heat and be bad and do all that kind of stuff. I'm with you, though, Brad. I agree with you. It doesn't mean that I wouldn't pull the lever for if I was in the if I was in the shot. But uh I got to say that uh, it, it definitely means we've got to call her out. Okay, we're continuing with Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Remember last week when I was all bent out of shape? Yeah, that was me last week. This week, it's all Brad all the time. Uh, Brad, all right, we're going to move off of this one. Again, let me sum with what I just said, because somebody said, she's nice, Clayman's not. Look, I would still, if, it, if I was in the voting booth right now and had those choices in front of me, I'd still vote for Mia. The problem is, is that if we don't call out the actions of the people that we support when they're wrong, they'll just keep doing it, right? So we've got to bring this to their attention. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't vote for her. It just means call her out when it's not right. That's what you do. All right. Number two, Brad. Number two. The out-migration in the state of Alaska, it's become a great talking point, although Les didn't bring it up yesterday, uh, but I know that it's being brought up in various forms. Hit me with it. 
So there's an article in the Alaska Beacon uh, written by James Brooks. The headline of it is Dunleavy Challenger Attacks Incumbent Over State's Population Decline. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's an article on comments that Les made down at the Southeastern Alaska uh, Foundation uh, Forum uh, last week, uh, essentially blaming the Dunleavy administration for the state's outmigration uh, to uh, uh, the, the loss of population more people leaving the state than coming into the state. That's it. That's net out migration. Uh, uh, blaming the Dunleavy administration for that and saying that under a Guerra administration, we would, we wouldn't have that. We would reverse that. And it's a, it's a, it, it's sort of a, a, a novel way to slide into the attacks on Dunleavy's K through 12 cuts or proposed K through 12 cuts. They didn't actually happen. Uh, uh, proposed university cuts that are now almost all the way back. Proposed cuts on on the ferries that uh, the southeastern Alaska uh, Sea Highway that uh, that that's in the process of, of getting sorted out. Hopefully, eventually, it, it. But but he's trying to he's trying to feed all that into that's what's feeding the state's uh, out migration. Alaska Alaska has had periods of in migration. They've had periods of out migration, and it all depends on on it all boils down to one thing: what's going on in the lower forty eight. Right. If there are jobs in the lower 48, good paying jobs in the lower 48, Alaska has out migration. If, if the lower 48 is going through economic distress uh, and there are good jobs as there are when oil prices are high um, in Alaska, and there's a lot of oil projects going on historically, um, uh, then Alaska has in migration. If those two things are relatively in balance, uh, Alaska sort of goes up and down between out migration and in migration. K through 12 might have an impact. Status of K through 12 might have an impact at the margin on some families. University might have an impact at the margin on some families. Um, and other things that Les talked about might have an impact at the margin on some families. But the bulk of what shifts Alaska's population in or out is what's going on in the lower 48 with respect to jobs. Um, and, and frankly, you know, we've got a very, we've got a high uh, uh, employment rate, people, uh, employers searching for people in the lower 48, just as we are in Alaska. We've got the lower 48 going through the same sort of teacher problem uh, uh, that we are in Alaska. I've spent a lot of time uh, in Illinois recently with my mother um, and the, the articles, the newspaper down here are teacher shortage. Uh, uh, you know, how are we going to get more teachers? Uh, employee shortage. How are we going to get more employees? You know, we need we need people for for uh, uh, restaurants. We need people for bus drivers. I mean, the same sort of stuff we're seeing in Alaska. And what that does, because it's it's less expensive to live in the lower 48, and the and the and the pay scale doesn't isn't that far different from Alaska. What that does is pull people from Alaska down to the lower 48, or in 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 another way, stop people, keep people in the lower 48. Not moving, uh, not moving up to Alaska. So, th those sorts of attacks by Les, I think, are they're cute politically as a way of sort of bundling together his 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 attacks on K through 12, on the university, on right. on, on the ferry, and, and those sorts of cuts. But that's not what's going on. Well, what's, not, go, what's going on is the difference in the econo in the in the economies between the lower forty. Well, and the not to mention the fact that Dunleavy inherited this with a recession and then went straight into a pandemic. I mean, those things were, I mean, we were in the middle of a recovery, slow recovery that that immediately got short circuited by a pandemic. So, to me, it's not surprising that there was an out migration on top of that. Plus. Garen never accepts the fact that by cutting the permanent fund and sucking billions of dollars out of the private economy, he also made it less attractive as a legislator and the legislature as a whole made it less attractive to remain here because that money was being sucked out of the economy and spent on government. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, uh, I mean, those are other ways of comparing the, the lower 48 economy against the Alaska economy, but it's not, it's not K through 12. It's not the university. All of those are debates we can have and, and arguments about whether or not we ought to be funding them more or funding them not. But that's not the cause of the out migration. It's the, ca the cause is the relative strength of the lower 48 economy against, uh, against the Alaska economy. 
Um, and and of course, these are the games that get played uh, during the uh, during the election cycle, uh, of course. And it, it, in a lot of ways, it's that whole idea of it must be the governor's fault um, trying to lay it all at the feet. But at the same time, uh, you know, when things happen uh, under the next governor, well, that's, you know, outside of my control. This is the the big picture thing that we see where they may have small effects on it, but they don't have really, they don't have the lever, the secret lever that can flip the switch and make it happen. Yeah, exactly right, Michael. And and we ought to be, I guess, I guess my, my con- complaint, concern about less focusing on that and trying to use that as the tool to bundle all of his other arguments is we we misdirect Alaskans, right? We all think, well, you know, it's it's because of K through twelve, it's because of the university, it's all, and and our economy is suffering. We're losing all these people. It's not. Let let's set let's let's be honest about what's driving that, and set that aside and say, yeah, that's that maybe an issue we need to address, but it's not a political issue. It's not it's not an issue that 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 the governor uh, uh, is is encouraging or, or, not, or not encouraging at any given point in time. Let's focus on the issues. Let's focus on the issues that really the governor has has some control over. Right. Brad Keithley is our guest, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Brad, we got about three and a half minutes here for number three, which we've been trying to get to for a couple of weeks. And that is the lukewarm pick for the Department of Revenue Commissioner. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about, I talked about, uh, the why the Department of Revenue Commissioner is such an important spot. It sort of sets the tone for for how we think about revenue, and we need to be thinking about revenue uh, in this state for the reasons that we talked about uh, in the last segment. And and we need somebody who's creative, who gets up every morning and says, "How do we make revenue more equitable, more fair, and lower impact?" Devin is is not that person. I mean, Devin's a great bureaucrat, uh, but but Devin's the kind of person who just sort of you know goes along to get along. During the Walker administration, my great memory of Devin is during the Walker administration, Devin was the one who went to Wall Street when Alaska bonds, Alaska's bond rating was going back and forth. Went to Wall Street and said, don't worry about it. We got these permanent fund earnings that we can direct to government and make sure we cover cover government spending. Don't worry about, about Alaska's fiscal situation. We got it handled. And, and set the tone, set the expectation at Wall Street that then backed up and hit us in Alaska that we would use permanent fund earnings instead of, as Hammond intended, half to the PFD, half to government, that we would use more than half for government, whatever it took uh, to, to cover government spending and, 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 and wouldn't put our bond rating at risk, not by raising revenues equitably across the state, but by using permanent fund earnings and raising them on the backs of middle and lower income Alaska families. That was Devin uh, during the Walker administration. So to expect to expect this guy, uh, and nice guy, but to expect this guy to get up every morning and think, how do I make Alaska's revenue system more equitable and with a lower impact on the overall economy? To expect Devin to get up and do that is just, it, that's just not what he does. It, right. He, it's he, not he his spin- mindset. He spins. Devin's job, Devin's job is as debt manager and, and, and what Devin's job is going to be, what the Dunleavy administration is going to look for him as, as revenue commissioner is to spin, spin whatever the administration, spin whatever story the administration's come up with to justify whatever they're doing at, at any given point in time. Reminds me of the master of coin from Game of Thrones. That's exactly what it is. The crown wants it. I'll go get the money somewhere, no matter who I take it from. That's what it comes down to, uh, for sure. And it would have been nice to see uh, another candidate in there. Brad, about one minute left here. Well, I we, we need. I mean, let, let's go back to the let's go back to the basics on the revenue commissioner. We need somebody who gets up every morning and says, "How do I make Alaska's revenue structure more equitable?" And how do I lower the impact on the overall economy? PFD cuts have the largest adverse impact on 80% of Alaska families and the largest adverse impact of any revenue structure on, uh, on, on the overall Alaska economy. It is the worst thing we can be doing. We need a revenue commissioner who gets up and says and starts talking about, we can do things better. We can raise revenue more equitably and we can raise it with a lower impact on the overall economy. That's what we need at revenue commissioner. All right, Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you coming on board and joining us. Uh, We look forward to talking to you next week. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. 
Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.